hello everyone. Uh, thanks for coming for this tutorial. Uh, as you mentioned, I'm Satyajil. Uh, uh, we'll start with the tutorial. Uh, before that, uh, there are like basic instructions. Everybody should follow this one. Please join the chat, chat room, PyData London Airflow. You will find all the basic links on that. Oh, it's not coming. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, uh, okay. First of all, uh, how many of you have installed Airflow on your local system? Cool. Uh, how many of you have filled the form that we provided? Nice. Uh, those who haven't filled the form, please fill the form. Uh, that's the first link on the chat box. Uh, you'll need to give your name and email ID, and then we'll add you on the GCP so that you can do the third tutorial that we're gonna do on GCP. And you will also you'll also have a, a need to download the a JSON file, which is like a credentials, which you need to access files on GCP. Uh, after that, you should clone the Google, uh, GitHub, uh, GitHub GitHub repo, and then the installation instru instruction. So we'll take five to ten minutes for those who haven't installed the Airflow on the local system. And if you're facing any problem, then we are here to help you. Okay, uh, there's a one more thing. Uh, when you fill the form, you won't be able to instantly download the JSON file. We'll be adding you on the GCP. My colleague will add you guys on the GCP, and then you'll have access to download the JSON file. you are installing airflow right now okay I mean, you, 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 you need not wait for the JSON file. You can directly go and install the Airflow first. One more thing, uh, Airflow, uh, when you create the virtual environment and using Python 3, then, then it's not going to work. There is some issues with Google data flow. So uh, we, we have written there, like, there's a troubleshooting here. 
uh, either you can use Python or Python 2 or Python 2.7 while creating the virtual environment. In. And then do the pip install Apache Airflow. That will work perfectly. Those who are installing Airflow, is it everything good? Any problem? We suggest none of the Python 3 versions. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So it's weird. So everybody is able to clone the GitHub repository, right? And in the repo, there is a slide also. So if you, if you want to have that slide, you'll have in the repo. How many of you have installed Airflow now? Is it working? Cool. Okay, now, how many of you have Airflow on the system overall? <laughs> cool, good enough. Uh, because of the time, we should move forward. Good. Okay, so here's the agenda for this tutorial. The first upper half, we'll be talking for next 30 minutes, which will be quite boring. But again, the next 45 minutes, you guys will be doing the tutorials, getting to know about the GCP, getting to know about how to build a pipeline on Google Cloud Platform. And some of the tutorials will be uh, just to get your hands on an airflow on a local system. So that's the agenda for this. Uh, okay, so who we are, as Amit mentioned, me, uh, me and Kakshil, we both work at, work at Data Reply as a data engineer. Kakshil is also an Airflow co co committer. So if you have any question, a deep down question related to Airflow, then you can ask Kakshil. Okay, before starting uh, this tutorial, uh, there is a one truth that I'm gonna share with you guys. Uh, first of all, some, it's one truth, not some truth. Uh, data is weird and it breaks stuff. 
I mean, I guess all of you will agree with me. Sometimes it weirds and it breaks the stuff. When it breaks the stuff, it breaks the whole pipeline, and then you end up like this. Uh, there is no clue where the pipeline is breaking and how it's going on. And to not be in this uh, scenario, uh, we do need some robust workflow management system, and we'll be discussing some of them. Uh, some of them are like Cron. Uh, seriously, nobody uses into the scenarios. Uzi, Luizi, and Apache Airflow. Uh, these are the uh, the last three ones are like quite used in the industry. Uh, Cron, it's good for the one job, but not it doesn't handle the dependencies. So okay, here's the disclaimer. Uh, I'm gonna compare all these workflow management system uh, using cars. I am not a fan of car. But yeah, that's, that's what everybody suggested me to compare it with cars. So Cron, it's like the oldest thing. Uh, this, this, this slide is from Pete, who gave the uh, PyData talk on Luigi in 2016. He said, like, in the beginning, there was a Cron. We had one job, and it, ran, it ran at 1 AM, and it was good. Yeah, that's the scenario when you don't have a big data distributed system. But if you come to the today's scenario, this is not the case. It's a chaos, like there was no cron. I mean, you can't handle the multiple pipeline using cron, and you don't have a one job, it's a hundred. And then all the pipeline depends on the dependencies of the previous pipeline. So that's, that's, that's where the cron fails severely. Uh, also, uh, cron doesn't provide you the statistics of job, how much is time taking, and how it's going forward. So people came with Uzi. Uh, Uzi is like a, was the industry standard. Lots of people were using Uzi. Uh, lots of industry were using all Uzi, and it's oldest among all. It provided the Web API, Java API, and CLI, which is like an upgrade to the cron. But on top of that, uh, it uses XML to handle those pipelines, which is not good. I mean, I mean me as an engineer, I f sometimes find XML quite weird, and it's difficult to maintain. Also, it's, uh, Uzi is like quite, uh, it, it, it's, it's ask a lot of effort to manage, and it, since it is based on XML and uh, they don't have a modularity in their uh, whole uh, system, uh, it's difficult to customize also. They also have a very pretty bad web GUI to just monitor the pipeline, so that's why like Spotify came with Luigi. Luigi. I don't know how to pronounce, so I just always say Luigi. Um, it's, it's, it was the first uh, uh, workflow management system totally written in Python, and you can write your DAG. Uh, I'll be explaining DAG later on this slide. Um, uh, you can write your Python, uh, DAG in a fully Pythonic way. It, it is pretty stable because it came from the Spotify engineering system, uh, engineering team, and they are using uh, Luigi in, the, in most of their production environment, environment and it's a, it has a huge community. Given that, uh, Luigi depends on the external workflow management, uh, external scheduler, like Cron or something else. Uh, I don't know exactly. Uh, they, their web UI is again like an Uzi. Uh, it's not pretty stable and it's not good to maintain, maintain and monitor the pipeline. Also, they don't have an inbuilt monitoring or alerting system. So, uh, if you're developing pipe, um, uh, developing a pipeline, you should be focusing on the pipeline, not focusing on creating an alerting system for this uh, pipeline. So uh, uh, considering these cons, uh, this, uh, what's the, Airbnb came up with Airflow. Uh, it's, again, it's again similar to Luigi, but, uh, but more modular, and it's, 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 it's much far better than Luigi. They have a Python code base, code base and they have an active community there. Uh, it uses trigger rules. Uh, trigger rules is quite uh, useful when you develop pipelines. You define like, okay, which task should trigger when uh, based on some conditions. It also have a cool web UI where you can just check, okay, uh, every day this task, how many times is, how many, how, how much time it's taking to complete the job. Um, they have a queues and pools, means that if you have lots and lots of uh, tasks running in the one pipeline, then and if system is not able to handle or execute parallelly, then it creates the pool and queues. Jombie cleanup, it's a good thing. Uh, if the pipeline is not working and it's, it's unnecessarily eating memory, then you can have a job. And it can easily clean those pipelines, easily extensible. Uh, Initially, Airflow was built for like running on a local system. Then people came up with hooks. This is like an, uh, another way of integrating 
Airflow with different cloud system, and that's how it's it's easily extensible. Uh, while working on Airflow for past eight months, uh, we haven't find major issues with uh, Airflow. But one thing we we really we re it really annoyed me is like uh, no role based access control. It means like in in, in your engineering con uh, engineering team, uh, if people if lots of people are developing different pipelines. All the pipelines will be visible to all the engineering members, uh, uh, team members. So that's sometimes it's not good, good while developing. So there is no role-based control. Uh, the other minor issues are like deleting DAG. It's just, it's not straightforward. It means like whenever you delete it from the web UI, it won't be deleted from the database. So you have to go back to the database, write your queries to delete the rows, and then it will come up. It show it, it will show it in the web UI. Other cons. Mm, uh, to be honest, I didn't find any other uh, annoying features. Uh, uh, to 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 remove, I mean, uh, right now we'll be working on Apache Airflow 1.9. Um, in the next version, um, as Kakshil mentioned me, like, okay, they're gonna remove, uh, they're gonna ax issue access. I mean, they're gonna remove this uh, no role access based control. There will be a no role access based access based control in Apache next release of Apache Airflow. Means that. The, the DAG that you are creating will be visible to you only, not to others. Okay, so when people use these workflow management system, instead of having this scenario, you can have this. A proper, I mean, no, no, no chaos way of doing the pipeline. So yeah, that's, that, that's the benefit of using workflow management system. Um, I'll be more discussing about the airflow because we are here for this. So what is Airflow? Airflow is a platform, I mean, any questions? Uh, I'm moving too fast, I guess. No, it's good, the pace is good, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. I didn't fully understand that this is not Luigi. Luigi, yeah. Over Airflow. Over Airflow, uh, see, uh, Luigi, uh, it's, it, it, it doesn't have a, it doesn't have a work, I mean, it, 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 it it, it depends on yeah. John for scheduling. The purpose is like Airflow has inbuilt scheduler, so you don't need something external to schedule and manage it. And if you check the Luigi uh, web UI, and if you check Airflow web UI, there's a vast difference. So I won't say Luigi is bad, but it's not so good. Yeah, and it, it's also like they don't have a monitoring or alerting system. Like in Luia, Airflow, you have a... Uh, uh, different operators to do a Slack, ch Slack messaging and email mess uh, emails for for the alerting system. So that's like a huge benefit over the Luigi. So yes, what is Airflow? Airflow is a platform to programmatically author, schedule, and monitor workflow. When I say workflow, it's it's a DAG. Uh, it's DAG, which is like a directed directed acyclic graph, which is not like there there, there shouldn't be any loop when you are creating tasks. That's why if you see the if you see the low figure, this one, it's always going forward. There is no loop between the task. Okay, so we'll have a point-wise point -wise explanation for what's Airflow. It's an open source ETL workflow management tool written purely in Python. Uh, it's, it's very good uh, uh, workflow management system. It's, it's, it's glues, it's like an adhesive which, which glues the, uh, or binds your data ecosystem. It means like if you have a different, data warehouses, uh, you can easily maintain, do queries, do build the pipeline for the analytical solution using Airflow. Uh, it, can, it can handle failures, and on failures it can also give you alerts using email or Slack. Uh, you can easily monitor the performance over the time. Uh, they have a Gantt chart, they have a line chart, uh, which shows that, okay, which task is taking how much time. Uh, it can easily scale. Uh, we'll be discussing more on the architecture part of the airflow. Developed by Airbnb, and it, it has been inspired by uh, Facebook's data swarm. Uh, there's less information about the data swarm, but Airbnb thought like, okay, if we open source it to a community, then we'll have a good workflow management tool. Since it, is, it came, off, came out from the Airbnb uh, engineering team, it's, and they, they are using Airflow in a lot of their production system. It's, 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 it is a production ready, and it ships with DAX scheduler, as I mentioned. Uh, internal DAX scheduler, this is like, it doesn't need to ship, depends on the uh, external system. They have a cool web UI and also powerful CLI. Uh, 
Next, we'll move to Airflow Web UI, just give you like how Airflow looks and what are the different things that you can go through the Airflow. So when you install uh, Airflow, the first look you get is this. It's pretty basic, it's, but when you start working, like start, uh, starting running your DAGs, it would be more complicated, but it's still very user-friendly. As you asked about Luigi, when you look at this UI and uh, Luigi UI, you find it very simple. Everything is just in front. There's nothing hidden over there. Uh, so I'll show you more in detail uh, what are each of the things. Is it visible to everyone? So the first, uh, the first column is uh, turning on and off the DAX. So sometimes you deploy your workflows and then you find out that there's some bug and you need to restart it or you need to pause it. So you can do it using this. So there's an on and off switch. So if you on it, it means it's running. It's live on your system. But if you want to pause it, you just switch it off. So every, all the explanation here in the UI is given if you just hover on each of these components. Uh, the next column is DAG. It's just simply the name of the DAG. The third thing is schedule. Schedule is where, when you want your workflow to run. It's self-explanatory. Uh, and you can also use your cron expression. So if you have already been using cron, uh, it's easy for you. So if you want to run this workflow every five minutes, you know what's the cron expression, and you can just write it. The owner, as in if I don't want Satya to view some of my DAGs, I can keep myself as an owner. And as he mentioned, the role-based access control is going to be released in the newer Airflow version. So this can be enabled through here. Uh, recent tasks. So this all, all the circles over here just shows how many tasks fail, how many pass, how many are up for retries. Last run is just when the last DAG. Uh, executed. DAG runs is similar to recent task, but it's more on DAG level. So DAG is composed of small tasks. I'll explain you in later. But it's about DAG. There are small links over here which says if you want to manually trigger, like there's scheduling path and there's manually triggering as well. So if you want to, just for testing purposes, want to trigger some DAG, so you can just click over here and it would start running. And there are different views over here. For example, tree view, graph view, that all show more detail about how your DAG is performing. Any questions? Yeah? Yeah, is this GUI the only way to access it? Or it you can use CLI as well, but I think a GUI is more useful, as in it gives you more details. If you want to know how, man, how much time it takes to perform certain tasks, I think Web UI is the way to go. Yeah? Uh, one strange question when we are in the GUI and we run the first DAG. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so until DAG 10 is completed, this one will be on board. And then in the GUI, will it automatically show that this, now the DAG number 10 is also running? So it will, it will be in the on mode? So yeah, if you on both of the, those DAGs, it would show you that first this is running. So here, every time, it would show that this is running. But it won't show that this DAG is dependent here right now. Uh, okay, so, so that one will be shown as off, even though it's running in the Yes. So, but if that's off, you cannot trigger certain DAGs. So if any DAG is off, for example, this is off, it won't run at all, even if you try to trigger it from a different DAG. Yeah, so I was talking about different uh, views. So the first one is tree view. So this just shows task run history over time. So there are different tasks in a particular DAG, and if you want to know what was the status, whether it passed, failed, so you can see it over here. Uh, it shows uh, when day 29, the uh, delete cluster task was run and it successfully passed. Uh, whereas the next time when it was run, it was failed. So it's just a history over time for each particular or each individual task. The second one is graph view uh, to visualize your task dependencies. Uh, this is very useful. Like if you want to know your task is dependent on which other task, I think this is very good. And even you can like refresh it and see when you are running the DAG in live mode, saying, OK, this task is running right now. This is in hold. So there are flags over here, like 
success, running, fail, skip, retry, and queued. So that's quite useful, I guess. Uh, the, then is its task duration. Uh, it just shows the duration of different tasks over past n runs. Uh, on y-axis, it's uh, time in seconds, and on x-axis, it's date. It, it would just show you uh, that your task started at this time, and it took some x amount of time. Then there's Gantt chart. Uh, this is useful. So this thing is uh, for x number of runs. So you can sh uh, see last 20, 25, 50 runs, which you can see over here. But the Gantt chart shows just for a particular run. So if you want to see how each individual task perform is performing for this run, uh, Gantt chart is the way to go. So you can see if a task is blocking anything. So here, if you see the third task is taking a longer time as compared to uh, other tasks. So you know you should you can try and optimize this task so that you can minimize the overall uh, run duration. The another one is DAG details. So if you just want to see more metadata or more information about your DAG, with how many retries you want, how many tasks there are, what kind of tasks they are, with DAG details. I'm talking a lot about DAG, so it's only advisable to see what a DAG is. How does it look uh, in code? So DAG anatomy. This is how it would look. I know it's not clear because of the projector, but I'll show you in detail. So I hope now it's more clear. So first we define some default configurations in Python. That is, who is the owner of the task, the start date, emails, how many times should it retry. So if you say you should retry x number of times, say two number of times, then it would retry. If it fails, it would retry twice. You don't need to perform anything. And if it fails, you can even configure an email, so it will just send you an alert. Or you can, there's a Slack API, Slack operator as well, so it will just message you on Slack if the task fails. Uh, then uh, retry delay, that is after how many times it should uh, retry. You don't want to, it to retry after just two seconds. Maybe there's a net, network issue, and if you retry just after two seconds, it's going to fail again. So it's only sensible to retry after one minute, two minutes, depending upon what your use case is. Then the DAG, uh, name of the DAG, default arguments, description, schedule interval, you can even give your cron expression over here. Then there are, as DAG is composed of tasks, now we define each task. So for example, here you are seeing a bash operator, which just runs a date command. And at the, after, after we define all the tasks in a DAG, uh, we set dependencies. So which, which task should run after what task? So you, uh, for example, here is t2.set upstream t1. So first uh, t1 would run, then t2 would run. Then t3 also is set upstream t1. So even t, uh, t1 should run first, and uh, t3 uh, should run after that. So this would translate to something like this in the web UI. So T1 here was print date, and T2 and T3 are sleep and templated. So once it runs uh, print date, the other two tasks are run in parallel. So let's move on to learning about the core concepts of Airflow. The first one, as I already explained some bits, DAG, it's directed acyclic graph. You can define your workflow logic uh, as a shape of the graph. And it's just a collection of the all tasks you want to run in a particular workflow. Uh, and that reflects the relationship and dependencies. Second uh, main concept is operators. So workflows are composed of operators. While DAG describes how to run a workflow, it's the task, and the task is composed of an operator. So operator determines what actually gets done. So for example, bash operator would run a bash command in your system. Python operator would run Python. An email operator would send a particular email Slack operator would sl send a Slack message. So those are operators. Uh, they are defined as class in Python. And there are three main types of operators, uh, sensors, action operators, and transfer operators. So sensors operators are certain type of operators that will 
keep running until a certain criteria is met. So basically, if you have a system uh, data lake and you are waiting for files to arrive in your S3 bucket or Google Cloud storage bucket, then you can run a sensor and just uh, look into a, a particular directory again and again just to see if your file is uh, file has arrived or not. Uh, so you have a Google Cloud Storage object sensor in Airflow that checks for an existence of a file in Google Cloud Storage. The second operator is an action operator that tells another system to perform an action or performs an action by itself. So bash operator, as I said, or email operator. Transfer operators are the ones that moves data from uh, one system to other. Uh, an example would be upload to GCS operator. So if your Airflow is installed in a VM or in your local machine, if you upload it to S3 or GCS, it's like transferring your file from some place to some other place. So it's the transfer operators. Any questions still now? So task. A task is a parameterized instance of an operator. So in the previous example, I showed you this figure. So here we are using a bash operator, but a bash operator would simply uh, execute a bash command, but it does not know which command to run. So there comes the concept of task. So you just need to give values to different parameters of an operator. So here, uh, bash command is date. So it knows that it needs to run the date command. So this is the task. So you can have multiple tasks using the same operator. Like this one is using date, some uh, other task would be using sleep, etc. Setting dependencies. So there are three ways of setting dependencies, uh, like T1, the task T1, and then set downstream tasks, that is T2, T2, or then set upstream T1. But my favorite, as I'm a kind of lazy person, so I would prefer and looks more logical way that T1 bitwise operator T2. So you can just chain your operator saying T1 bitwise operator T2, T3, T4, and so on. A task instance. So a task instance uh, is characterized as a combination of a DAG, a task, and a point in time. So if I show you here, if I click here and this task, uh, hello world, at the, at, if, if this is run at today at 1 p.m., the whatever status it has, so a characteristics that is by the combination of a DAG, the name of the DAG is DAG1 airflow tutorial, a task, task is hello world or sleep world, and the point in time is the time right now or the date when it last ran. So moving on to architecture, I think Satya would explain this. Yeah, initially, initially I mentioned that airflow is quite scalable. Uh, So we'll be discussing uh, uh, three different architecture for the Airflow. Uh, the upper half is like sequential and local, which runs on a local system. The lower half is like a distributed way of running Airflow. Uh, when I say distributed way of running Airflow, it means like you want Airflow to process data, not the external system to process the data. So uh, that's how it runs. Uh, we generally, in our day-to-day -day job, uh, we usually prefer local local way of running Airflow because it's, uh, we basically call the REST API for Google Cloud API, uh, Google Cloud Engine, and then we do all the processing through Google Cloud, not through Airflow. So Airflow just orchestrate the pipeline on Google Cloud. Uh, yeah, so let's let's move on to sequential executor. It's it's more like a web server and RDBMS thing. Uh, Airflow basically store all the job, job metadata, DAG metadata on RDBMS. It, by default, it uses SQLite, but you can also have a RDBMS like MySQL or PostgreSQL on other web servers. Uh, sequential executor is like, as name is as name suggests, it's like a one by one execution. Um, it's good for the demo purpose, but not being used in the production system. Uh, this is what we use: local executor. The only difference between uh, uh, sequential and executor is the scheduler and the sequential executor. They have a multiple scheduler and multiple sequential executor. So we, you'll have a, a parallel task running on the local uh, executor. That's the only difference. And if if I go with the uh, distributed way of running uh, Airflow, it's, it's, it runs on Celery. Um, I don't have much information about Celery, but uh, it is out of the box from Airflow. They, they support Celery. Uh, 
and it can it can vertically scale and horizontally or it can also horizontally scale it's a production grade way of running a uh, distributed way of uh, processing data on airflow uh, it also supports pool and queues i didn't mention uh, i didn't mention the mesos and kubernetes these two are like the community driven this is not from the out of the box from airflow and uh, mesos and kubernetes way of running airflow is still in development it's not quite matured so yeah the next is yep i think the 30 minute of talking is quite over yeah we'll move into the uh, running airflow and doing the tutorials so we'll be we'll be having three different tutorials one is the basic one the second is the dynamic way of creating dag and the, the third is like running a pipeline on google cloud platform so yeah that's it Are you guys done with the installation of Airflow? Because we now we're gonna start the Airflow and just have a look on like how how the UI looks, and we'll move on to tutorial one then. Any problem with the installation? No, right? Good. Yeah. So just uh, set up your Airflow installation directory. Just export your home. I think I'll perform with you so that you can stay together. So all of you have installed Airflow, right? So once you install Airflow, you need to initialize its meta database. So your task run history, your DAG history, everything is stored in a meta database. So for a sequential in the executor, you can save it in SQLite, which is by default. So you don't need to perform any uh, more actions. But if you're lo using local executor, then you need to configure MySQL or PostgreSQL to store this meta database. So first you need to initialize your Airflow database. So you just need to run Airflow and init DB. Once that is done, uh, there are two components that you need to start. One is the web server and one is the scheduler. So first you need to start your web server. You can configure the port uh, which you want to run. For example, if you are using Ambari or something like that, which also uses the same port, just change the port. And in a new tab, open Airflow Scheduler. I'm saying new tab because this would keep on running. Uh, you can run this as a daemon, but this would keep on running on the back end and then start Airflow Scheduler. Does anyone any issues uh, performing this? Once that is done, just open your any browser and just uh, go to localhost 8080. This should bring you to the Airflow web UI. Can everyone access the UI? Yes? Sorry?
So once you just initialize your database, just run web server and the start the scheduler. Is it done? Okay, moving on. Uh, you need to clone the Git repo. I think you guys should have the link to uh, our GitHub repository. If not, just go to GitHub Data Reply UK and this link basically, Airflow Workshop by Data London. No, sorry. Can you post that link on So if you get any errors in the web UI or uh, in the CLI saying that uh, in example three import error variable JSON or something like that, don't worry, it's expected. Once you clone the Git repo, just copy uh, the DAX folder to Airflow Homes and then DAX. So DAX folder is where all your workflows would be stored. So every time the scheduler would pick uh, that directory and execute any Python files inside it. So should we start for the first tutorial? All good? So I'll go with the first tutorial. Uh, that's pretty basic. Uh, it's it's all using bas command, but just to give you the feel like how you can start the uh, Airflow DAG and just have a, some play around with the web UI and check what's the code, when it's running, how it's running, how you can check whether it's retrying, something like that. So okay. Uh, yep. Yeah. So just toggle to toggle it on on a DAG flow. DAG one Airflow tutorial. And then all you need to do is to just visible to everybody, right? Just trigger a DAG 
and then it asks, do you want to really run it or not? So when you trigger it, you will see that this tag is running. And when you click on this one, you'll have a graph view of three different tasks in this DAG, which is like a print hello, sleep, and print world. Um, is what you are seeing is just a graph view. We don't know what's the code is. So if you want to check what's the code is, you can go here and check what's the code. So as, as explained in the DAG anatomy, you first define the default arguments for the DAG, which I mean, which is pretty self-explanatory. Some of them are like email failure, email retries, like based on your use cases. Um, then you, what you do is like define as a, define DAG as a context manager, and then you define a different uh, task, which is like this one, the second, and the third. What it's doing is like it's just echoing hello, sleeping for five seconds, and then print world. That's it. That's what it's doing. So if you see, like there is only three different tasks: print, sleep, and print world. And this is what it's rendered in Airflow graph view. The, the good thing is like, okay, let me run it again, just to give you. So now this DAG has run for like three times, and success is three times. There is no failure. If there is any failure or if it's retrying, then the color will be yellow or red. When you run it and go to the graph view, it takes a little time to start sometimes. And there are color coding for all the status of the task. Like you can see, like which one is running, which one is in queue, which one is in failure mode. Yeah. Question: Did you put it in the artifacts that run it three times? No. We we explicitly define three different tasks in a DAG. So if you, if you, if you go into the code, there is after DAG definition. This is the DAG definition, right? There is a one task. This is. Then there is a second task this, and then there is a third task, this. In the second tutorial, we'll be doing the dynamic way of creating task. Uh, all you need to do is to just define a, a line in the CSV file, and then it will read and create a dynamic task. So everyone, yeah? It's continuously checking, is there any change in the DAG or not? So it's, it's quite, I mean, is there any problem with tutorial one? It's like pretty basic. All good? Yep. Uh, there is, oh, okay, yep. Yeah. I'll, I've missed that one. So if you want to see uh, uh, what's doing in the, what Sprint Hello is doing, all you need to do is to just click on that, this part, and then you will see the view log. And if you go here, so it's starting attempt of one, of two. We define like it should be doing the two times. And if you see here, there is an output hello. That's it. So the good thing about the web UI is you can see the logs uh, as well, yeah? Yeah, it's getting it from the same GC project. The error you are getting is that it's missing variables. So I'll explain to you more in detail about what variable is and how we can import it. So that should work. Yeah? Uh, how long are the logs for? Sorry? How long are the logs preserved for? Forever. Forever. Yes. Yeah. And you can change the uh, logging level? Yes. So you can configure those things in a file called airflow.cfd. So it's a config file. So if you want to remove your logs after every certain days, you can write that. If you want to change the logging level, you can do that as well. And that CLT is on like a global level, or can you do it per? Okay, you can do it per uh, DAG level as well. So mm -hmm. if if you define your own operator, then you can just change the logging level. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And the order in which you define the task. The dependence is that the way you define the task. So if I again go to the code, <coughs> so it doesn't matter how you're defining the task here. What only things matter is, is the dependencies that you're defining. So it should first run the print hello, then sleep, and then print word. That's like a bitwise operator as a print by Kakshil. So that's how it's maintained the order.
So I'll move on to tutorial two. Um, this is uh, the benefit of the uh, airflow is like you define your workflow as a code. So when you do the coding, you'll have a lots of customization options like. I'll not go here right now. I'll go to the code. Then again, the same thing. Um, uh, in this tutorial, what we are doing is like, uh, we, we are having a one CSV file which defines like, okay, which task should do what, right? And then what it's doing is like, it's taking an input file. Whenever you, def whenever you are reading any, any input file in Airflow, it should always be an absolute path, always. Otherwise, it won't be able to run that, uh, read that file. So we are using OS, OS library to read the absolute, I mean, get the absolute path of the file and then Again, the same thing. We are defining the default arguments and then defining the DAG here. And then while reading, pardon me, I just need to show you what's. Sorry for the delay, that's what happens when you run thousands of things at a single time. Yeah. You should be, you should be moving. No, don't do the sublime tax. Sorry, it's difficult to show you. I don't know why I'm not able to move Excel file here to the other screen. And? Yep. Sure. 
So what we are defining here is like, uh, since again, in, in this tutorial we also use, we are using BAS operator. Uh, in this BAS operator, we are taking the uh, uh, configuration from a CSV file, which is like, okay, uh, if, uh, so the third, col uh, third column is like defining whether it's a sleep or an echo. When, if it's a sleep, then sleep for two seconds. If it's a sleep again, do it uh, for three seconds. And if it's an echo, then just print Satya. That's it. That's a simple way of uh, generating a dynamic way of doing. Uh, So yeah, if you again go to the code and check, what it's doing is it's just reading the CSV file and just reading all the three columns into three different variables and just checking whether, and it's checking whether if it's a sleep or an echo. If it's a sleep, then use a bash operator and do the sleep operation. If it's not, then do the echo operation. And that's how we, we just define the two different tasks. That's it. And then here, if you see uh, T1 and T2, that they, they are like just a dummy task. Dummy task just to uh, have a sequential way of uh, moving forward. And then when you go to the graph view, it just say dummy DAG0. And then the first one is the sleep one. Because that first is the sleep. And then the dummy DAG, again, the task sleep, and then the echo. So these are the three three things that we define in the DAG. And what if what if I do like a new let's say that Cockshell and then do the echo. I'll save it. And if I refresh it here. So here you have task echo three. We added one more file uh, one more rows row and then it's gonna add a task echo four year if you see that it's automatically generating a new task while reading the way of uh, from the csv so it's very good way of doing uh, uh, when you have a repetitive task or if you want to re i mean if you want to create your own configuration file and then out of that configuration file you want to grow up your uh, data pipeline so that's that's a very good way of doing this thing and that's the benefit of writing workflow as a code So if I run it, it's it's in the queue because that's the gray one is the queued, and then it wait wait for that dummy tag. Dummy tag is just not doing anything; it's just finished. And if I go here, if I wait for like. It automatically do the things. And then here it's running this thing, sleep for two seconds. And that's what we defined here, right? Sleep for two seconds, and then sleep for three seconds, and then echo, and. So, so basically, what we are trying to do is like, we're just reading it from files and just creating a dynamic way of, a dynamic DAG, so. That's, that's the tutorial to A. Anything, yeah. Uh, so, for example, you mentioned that there are sensors that will end up uh, like reading from a pocket. In We're going to do that in tutorial three. Okay. But is it possible to dynamically define the tag based on the contents of that file? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, sometimes you need to write your own plugin uh, for that. Might be like. Uh, uh, that, that was a case that we were doing in one of our projects, like in BigQuery. We need to define whether the uh, whether whether we are, whatever the data that we are ingesting should be ha should have a partition table or not. So we did we did wrote our own plugin to access the data inside the BigQuery and then check whether uh, there is any date column or not. And based on the date column, we did the partition. So sometimes it's available, sometimes it's not. Then you have to write your own plugin to meet your expectation. <laughs> Yeah, you can see the live thing that it's running. I guess it should complete, yeah. It completed task echo four. I'm repeating the same thing just to get you know that, okay. So it's printing the cuckshell here. The task four was the cuckshell. <coughs> this is the part. 
Okay, the, these two was like, just give you, give you enough confidence on Airflow, like, okay, how to run, how to write a DAG. Is there any, is everything is clear about the DAG anatomy, how to write a DAG, uh, what's the default argument, how to define a DAG, how to write a task, and then the setting a dependencies. When you, when you write a, a Airflow a code, it's quite simple when you have a available operator. It becomes complicated when you write your own operators uh, or write your own plugin to meet your expectation or requirements. Uh, on Google Cloud, there was like uh, some of the operators were not available, so Kakshil wrote some of the operators like checking whether the file is empty or not. So these, these operators were not available. So we wrote to meet our data validation techniques, uh, some of the techniques. So far, oh, yeah? So when you wrote your own custom operators, what were some common like, problems that you ran into? Like, what was the difficulty about Excuse me? When you wrote your own custom operator, yeah. like, what were some common pitfalls you ran into? Like, what was the difficulty about it? You want to answer? Uh, to be honest, uh, it's, it was quite easy. So anything that has an API that is easily configurable to write in Airflow. So as we give an example, uh, there was no operator in Airflow that checks for an empty file, which is very important when you do validations. When you are moving, from a, moving a file from one stage to, let's say, from a landing stage to a real data warehouse, then you need to perform certain validations. So we wrote this operator that just checks the file size, that is basically just metadata checking the size. Uh, so it was, it's quite simple to be honest. And that's, that's why you would find many contributors in the Airflow project. Because the project that has an API, you can just write a custom book or custom operators for Airflow. Yeah, so basically uh, what the, the, the custom operators that we developed, it's mostly related to Google Cloud Platform. And Google Cloud Platform, they, they always provide the REST API. And the Airflow community already, already built a hook, which is like a way of extending your Airflow to the uh, another cloud platform. So we used hook as a uh, uh, parent class and then we build our own way of validating the data. And so for example, there's a base operator called HTTP operator and you have a different product that works on HTTP, then you can just expand to that class. You can just use that as base class and just write whatever you want to do with it. So it's easy, just extending the same thing. <coughs> So it was pretty simple to yeah. develop your own code. Um, so what's your, what's your advice for sort of testing DAGs? So uh, if, if you want to roll that to the DAG or anything. Um, so first, first that's, uh, that's why a sequential executor exists. So if you want to do any kind of testing, first test it on a sequential executor that does one thing at a time so that you don't just go and in a production environment. Just use sequential editor, a sequential executor, uh, test your pipeline over here, see what is failing. The good thing is the, the logging in Airflow is quite good. So you can, <coughs> when you define your task, you can just uh, define your log, what do you log that as well. So when the, something breaks, it's easy for you to just go there and check what's wrong with the code. So I think using sequential operator with maybe just spin up a Kubernetes con uh, and drop a container using Airflow and then just try it out there. Once that is fixed, uh, uh, take your Python file for that tag and then use it on your main Airflow cluster. And, yeah. Um, I have a question about like, how you manage code for the DAG, like, uh, especially like version, like, how do you handle that when you have multiple versions of the pipeline? Is there anything in Airflow to help you manage that? Or no, that, that, that you need to do it in your code, not through the Airflow DAG. So currently they are developing such that you can manage multiple versions of the same file, like Git, uh, what Git does. Like if you're, uh, you are updating the same name multiple times, it, they are working currently, <coughs> and it would maintain a history, something sort of a history. But still, it's work in progress, so nothing exists right now. Maybe you've seen in the next version. Okay, uh, any more questions? We have half an hour more, 25 minutes to be honest. Okay, so we'll move to uh, the third tutorial, which is running a pipeline on Google Cloud Platform. Did you add it, everybody? Oh, yes. So are you guys able to access the Google Cloud Platform? Yeah? Cool.
So before going into third tutorial, uh, we need to be familiar with some of the advanced concepts that Airflow has. Uh, XCOM, trigger rules, variables, branching, and subdecks. So I'll go through one by one, go, go through them one by one. First is XCOM. So I explained to you how a task, individual task is defined. So sometimes it is useful to exchange some kind of metadata between those tasks. So imagine a file is landed on Google Cloud Bucket, but you don't know where exactly that file land or what's the file name. So you write your operator that just fetches the file name and you can send it to your other task. So that is that can be easily done by XCOM. XCOM is just an abbreviation of cross communication. It's a means of communica uh, communication between two task instances. Uh, this is saved in database as a pickled object, so you cannot have a massive file that you can extend between two tasks, but something small like what a database can support, which can be, I think the, the right now it's somewhere in some megabytes. I'm not sure how many, but it's just some megabytes. Uh, trigger rules. So imagine you want to uh, execute your task, but based on some condition. So that's where a trigger rule exists. So for example, all success. All success says that if all your upstream tasks are successful, then you can uh, uh, continue running this task. So sometimes you want, you have a branching thing and you want that just one of the task, one of the upstream tasks pass, then you need to execute, then you can use one success, uh, all failed, all done. So they are, they are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, next concept is variables. Variables is just a key value store. It's a generic way to store any arbitrary content. Uh, the address you are getting right now is for some variables because we have not defined those variables. That's why Airflow is complaining about it. Now variables can be created, updated, deleted, and exported into JSON file from the UI itself or you can also do it from the CLI. Branching, uh, so branching is just an if-else condition, basically. So if you see here, uh, run this first and then branching. So the branching task would check for certain condition. If it matches something uh, that you define in your code, that if it matches this thing, it should execute branch A. If it executes some other, if it results into some other thing, then it should execute uh, the below branch. We use this for one of our clients where we we're using BigQuery, so if, if we find that the data is partitioned, we have a different leg, leg over here. So we would be doing some different kind of operation for a partition table, and if the, date, if the table is not partitioned, we would have some simple operations over here. Subdecks. So subdecks are perfect for repeating patterns. Uh, we can combine all like parallel task, task items, so task one, task two, task three, task four, you know, these are both the same things, just parameterized. So you can combine this whole task into one section, and this section one can be a DAG object, a different DAG file, which you just need to initialize with some parameter. It's like basically creating a function. So now let's start the third tutorial. Before that, I'll give you a quick introduction to GCP. How many of you have ever used Google Cloud Platform? I think most of have not used it. <laughs> okay, so some of the popular products are Cloud Storage and BigQuery, which we are going to use today. Cloud Storage is similar to Amazon S3, or you can compare it with SDFS. Uh, BigQuery is a data warehouse, so if you are aware about Amazon Stack, it's similar to Redshift. So. If you downloaded the PDF, you can just click the links over there to access a GCP project or cloud storage or BigQuery from there. So you can just take a look at how it looks like. So if you click on the link at cloud storage, this is what it would show you. There are buckets and then there are some files in those buckets like this uh, Airflow service account. We would require this service account to interact with Google Cloud using Airflow. So you can download it from here or I just posted in the channel talk.io so you can download it from there as well. Similarly, you can check uh, BigQuery.
So it's just basically a database and then you can have multiple tables inside it. So first, before we actually see what the tutorial three does, we need to do some uh, operations. First of the first is to create a connection. That is how your Airflow would interact with your GCP. So we have created a service account uh, through which Air Airflow would have permission to use GCP. Uh, in Airflow, though, you have need to create connections, which should be shown here. Yeah. In your Airflow web UI, uh, just go to admin and click on connections. So, so it should show you this uh, UI, click on create, and then you need to fill this information, which is also shown in the PDF or the slides deck if you download it from GitHub. Have all of you downloaded the PDF or should I uh, do it myself over here so that you can get it? First select the connection type which is Google Cloud Platform. Connection ID is basically whatever we would write in a tag file so I like calling it an Airflow service account. So. The project ID is pydata 2018 airflow Key file path is uh, the path where you have stored your JSON file. So it should look something like this for you. You can copy paste this from your PDF. The scopes is just Google APIs and we are authorizing Google Cloud Platform. Then just click on save. <coughs> Next step is we need to import variables uh, that are necessary for uh, the third tutorial, I explained you the variables, what variable is, it's just a key value uh, pair and we, we generally use variables to create dynamic DAGs or where we can just change the variables in the UI and the DAG would then pick up and change uh, whatever it is in the variable. So go click on admin and then variables. So I uh, already have variables defined, but for you, you need to just click on choose file and uh, the part where you have cloned your Git repository, just find that part and there would be a file called variables.json. Just import that file and click on import variables. So it should populate the, the UI with this key and value. Once you import this, have all, everyone imported the variables? Any problems? 
once you import this you can you please change the bigquery destination data set table to your first name and last name so basically what i'm saying is just go here uh, edit this and instead of cox you'll write your name so that you can see what you have created so instead of cox you can have satyashil and just click on save so the objective for this tutorial is like what's the process the process is uh, the airflow dag is waiting for a file to be uploaded in cloud storage so there are a couple of airflow files we are waiting for those airflow files in cloud storage and airflow is waiting for it and once the file arrives it would then use a operator called gcs to bigquery operator which would copy the files from cloud storage create a bigquery table uh, the table would be created with the name whatever you give over here and it would import those files into this table so the folders where this file would be uploaded is you can just click here uh, in your pdf and see the gcs uh, the cloud storage again to see where the files would be uploaded so if you go to the code section you will find that there are just three operators first one is a dummy operator called start the second one is gcs uh, landing sensor where i define uh, what area i should be looking on like which bucket i am looking into so a bucket is looking into a gcs bucket what gcs bucket is is using variable dot get so the variables we have defined in the variable section in the ui would be called here it would get the value and it would set the bucket here with the proper name for object like which files we are looking for is gcs directory it's similar thing it is again we have defined gcs directory in the variable section and then what we want is all uh, Arrow files. So how we generally do in ETL is, let's say we have thousands of files. So we first upload those files, and then we, at the end of that, we send a success file saying everything has been uh, uploaded successfully. So I, I, I'm not waiting here for thousand file. I'm just waiting here for a success file. So a success file is again defined by a Python variable which says I'm looking for this success uh, file in that particular GCS directory. so i'll just trigger this dag if you click on running and click on dag id you would see that there are three tasks the start is a dummy task which should start and just complete because it does nothing actually and the gcs landing sensor would start and it would wait until the file arrives it would keep on running so you can see it's queued now it's using sequential operator so it's slow and now it's running and it would run until you see the file so if you click on logs you just see that it's the connection has been established and now it's refreshing the access token and it would just then wait for the file so sensor check existence of uh this bucket and it's checking for this file in this directory example 3 euro <coughs> so it's waiting for this file i have not uploaded that file yet so it's still waiting so i'll do that now first i'm copying all the avro files in that directory and 
these steps I'm just simulating a real world example. So you won't be doing this, but a external system would be sending your files to G your GCS. So I'm just simulating that thing. So all the Euro files is copied, but the sensor would still be waiting for a success file because success file has not yet been uploaded. So now I'm uploading the success file as well. It says operation completed and you would be able to see the success file in the cloud storage UI as well. So if you go to bucket, the bucket we are watching is pirate airflow. You'd see that it has created a directory, Avro. It has uploaded all the Avro files and it has also uploaded a success file. So we would expect Airflow to now trigger the second uh, task. <coughs> so it says it has completed this. So it uh, found that file which it was looking for. It says success criteria met and exiting. So the sensor basically would always wait for a certain file and once that criteria is met, it, it just then uh, executes the next step, which here is copying file from a cloud storage to BigQuery. So I have defined uh, the name of the BigQuery data uh, table as Satya, so I should expect here a new table being created by Airflow called uh, Satya in this data set. I, I can see many of you have also uh, created this table. so. You can browse basically any table. You can see there are five million records that have been imported from those Euro files. <laughs> like this was the one I created, this was the one which you guys created. So basically it's quite simple and you would now see once that task completes that Basically, every whole pipeline has completed. The file, the uh, Airflow was waiting for a file. The files arrived. It moved the file to uh, BigQuery. It created a new table and imported all the Avro files. Uh, Av the good thing with Avro is you don't need to define schema. So that's why it just imported it. There's a different version in the GitHub repo which uses a CSV and also uses a schema.json file, which well, you can try out. We have short on time, so. Unfortunately, I won't be able to show you that, but there are, uh, it's already in the GitHub repo with proper comments, so you can try it. We are not going to remove your accesses today itself. You can uh, use it till tomorrow. So at then, uh, tomorrow night we will remove your access. So summary is, what Airflow is, you can just use workflow as a code. Python is a very friendly language and it's very easy to use, so same goes with Airflow. As you, basically what you do is just write, give the parameters the values. I think even a kid studying in 10th standard can just uh, pass values to a variable. Uh, second thing is it integrates is seamlessly into Python data science stack. So if you, are, if you are doing some machine learning stuff and using Google Cloud, so Google Cloud has a product called uh, Dataproc, which you can use here, and uh, Airflow has some operators over there. So it can just run your machine learning model as well and store your output in uh, Google Cloud storage. It's easily extensible, like if you if you want to, uh, if there's not, if the functionality is missing from Airflow, you can just write your custom Airflow plugins and or operators, which should be uh, easy. It's a clean management of workflow metadata, different alerting system. So if the task fail, you can send emails or it can send a Slack message. Huge community and under active development, plus it has some proven real world projects. So many of the clients are using this. VPA has been the one in US that has been actively committing to this project and also using it in the production. So that's it. If you have any questions, let me know.